All right, guys, welcome to another video here. Um, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to flush skunks. Um, really simple, and once you get the stink bags out of them, as far as smell goes, it's real not, really not too bad. Um, but I'll show you first kind of my method, because I don't think I've shown this yet, on how I wipe down my beam. Um, I get these blue rags, uh, I sell them basically everywhere. I normally get mine from either Menards or Tyson's. Um, and I take it fold in half. I wipe the beam down, and then you'll see, but I can get four wipes out of that. Um, works really good for me. I normally only go through a couple rolls a year on a couple thousand animals, so I like that. They're cheap. Uh, but anyways, skunks. So, I got a, a nicer skunk here. Um, I'm going to show you guys a, a nicer, good-sized one as well as kind of a smaller one. I personally think the smaller ones are a lot harder uh, just because I have such a wide beam. Um, they like to really roll up and it can be kind of difficult. But we're going to turn this baby flesh side out. And slide it on the beam here. Get that nose snugged up there. And if you guys have watched my other videos of um, how I flesh other animals, I like to use vice grips to hold them on here. You know, I don't have that big of a belly and I don't like pushing on my beam constantly. Um, that kind of just holds it there nice and snug. Uh, the knife I'm going to be using is a caribou. I uh, really love this knife. Really love it. I used to use the Necker, switch to this, and I don't think I'll ever go back. But so what we're dealing with here with this skunk is you kind of normally have some gristle. Uh, it's very similar to a raccoon. Uh, gristle up in the neck area, um, then it gets a lot easier when we head to the bottom side. But um, we're going to start with our sharp side here, right behind the ear. Make some cuts. Um, notice how I'm cutting at an angle, not straight. Um, you want to constantly be using that sharp side at an angle. Um, and just be very careful. Don't get too close to that leg um, because that'll roll and you'll cut that with the sharp side. And don't get very close to this loose bottom lip or you'll cut that too. Um, but then I'm going to flip my knife over to the dull side and just start pushing. Um, but some skunks are certainly worse than others as far as gristle goes. Um, this one actually is pretty, pretty smooth sailing. Um, the, the big males tend to get really difficult sometimes. Uh, they got some gristle, a lot of gristle, some of them. I've scraped some skunks with gristle all the way down to the tail, uh, just like a big boar coon might have sometimes. So you can kind of see, we're just cleaning this up with the dull side here. Um, don't go over on the edges of your beam, just keep it all on the flat part. Uh, I like to, I always like to put all my animals right in the leg hole, that way I can get that armpit area cleaned up. I just think it looks nice. Um, and if you do leave some fat in that armpit area, it really pops out and can also potentially cause slipping issues. So, see, I just keep fleshing it down here. And I like to take my skunks, I like to take the belly fat all the way off. Um, you'll see why in a bit, I just, I won't have to roll it back over again once I get it done. Um, but right here, this is a male. That's what that hole is there. Uh, you just kind of got to be careful around that. If you rip it off, it's really not any big deal. Um, and you can see I'm kind of working on the edge a little bit. Uh, just be careful, you know. I've fleshed quite a few, so I kind of know what I can get away with. Um, but for beginners especially, stay on this flat side of the beam here. I'll work a little bit more over here. Um, and if you see this first starting to wrinkle up when you're scraping, like say you've seen something like that, you got to readjust it somehow. Uh, you're going to rip that. Uh, that's the hardest part with small scallops on a wide beam like mine. So now I'm going to flip them over to the other side. We'll do the same thing. I like starting on the sides. I do it on my coons and my scallops. There goes my vice grips. Ah. I just like starting on the sides. I think it's a lot easier to get the back off um, if you start on the side. So again, sharp side, working it down from the ear, not getting too close to that arm area. And then we're flipping the dull side, scraping it down. Uh, I really do enjoy fleshing skunks for the most part. There goes my vice grips again. Obviously they need tightened up, that's okay. I really like flesh and skunks. 
on. They're relatively easy. I wish I had a little bit narrower of a beam to do it. Um, that's okay. And notice how when I'm coming to this leg, you can see I have the knife at about a 45, but then I'm coming to this leg and leveling it out. Um, that's kind of just so I don't rip that leg off there. We got some shoulder fat there we're going to have to get off in a second. Put it on the leg. Scrape it on down. I'll take this as far as I can get it off of there too. Got a little strip off of there. Get some of this arm fat off of there. Maybe get a little bit more off up here. There. Okay. Now we're going to flip it over to the back. Oh, this is the only strip we got left here. Uh, tends to be the most grisly. Um, I don't think it's difficult by any means. Uh, when you get gristle right, right on the bottom side of the jaw, it can be kind of difficult. But uh, flipping it to the back here, put my vice grips on there. Uh, we're going to sharp side it again, right behind where the ears are. Uh, which kind of just draw yourself a line from ear to ear. Skunk ears are on the side of their head, so you kind of just got to play pretend, but again, slicing at an angle, work it down. Um, each skunk kind of has their own line of where the fat, or the gristle, I should say, um, ends. And then you can start using the dull side. Normally, once I get to the shoulders, uh, most times I can just start pushing with that dull side. Like so. You don't want to work them down too far though, um, especially on a beam like mine. I, number one, I don't like being really bent over, uh, but number two, you can see as it gets further down there, it's starting to wrinkle over here, and that's going to tear a hole. So you can see there, that's just where I shot them. Pull them up here a little bit. Again, clip, clip them on with the vice grips start going. Now you guys can see this one's got a good amount of gristle on, getting most of it off with the dull side here. It's a nice skunk. Scraping it down. And what I like to do is once I get on this back side here, let me just clean some of this taller stuff off. I like to take it all the way down the base of the tail. Um, that way when I get that done, there's going to be equal amount of fat on both sides, so the flanks aren't sliding all over the place. Um, which I'll show you how we clean those up here in a second. But I'm just going to keep scraping down with our dull side, taking that all the way off of there. I like to get all that stuff off, get it out of the way, because then it really just helps you see better. Um, there's normally a pretty good sized fat pocket here, the way that I skin them. Normally a pretty good size one, so you definitely want to get that cleaned up. So now this is kind of the hard part um, with skunks. This fat pocket, if that shows up on the camera, um, that's got to go. So I'm actually going to pull them up here a little bit closer just so I can work it better. Um, but you just take that sharp side and very gently work some of that fat. I, I really don't want to cut too deep on this. Um, if anything, I'd rather leave a little bit of fat on there than cut the tail off because unlike raccoons, on a skunk, the tail is important, um, especially what mine are going towards. So back to the dull side here, just cleaning that up. Trim a little bit more of that. That looks good. Yeah, you guys can see I just took that big fat pocket right out of there. I'm going to do a couple more swipes along here. And there we go. So I'm going to back them up again. So you can see I'm clipping it in the middle again. What I like to do once I got this tail done is I'll just pull it over. And this is why I flesh off the belly first. So then all I have left to finish is these flanks here. And you just use that dull side. You're going to push that fat right off. Go on the other side. That's all we got there on the flank. Just another little fat pocket. I'm going to scrape that off of there, and there we go, ready to go on a board there. Um, I do have another skunk I'm going to do here 
I'm going to try and do it probably a little bit faster now that I showed you guys one. But here's a nice flesh skunk. I might turn them first side out again and set them in a cart until I'm ready to board all of them. Um, and here we go. We got us a, another nice skunk, but you guys can see it's smaller uh, than the other one. So these ones, in my opinion, are more difficult. Um, just because they're so they're so narrow in this neck area with my beam, it's kind of hard. Um, I, I am probably looking to acquire a narrower beam for skunks and muskrats mainly <clears throat> um, for next season. But same thing. I'm going to slide them on here. These small ones are kind of a pain to get on, so I like to grab the tail and the center of the belly, get them on there. You guys can see, I mean, that other skunk was down here. Oh, this dude's a little guy. But vice grips on the face there. And this is the tough part right here on the small ones. You guys can see this is all loose um, because it's so tight right here that this is just constantly wanting to roll. So you really got to be careful on these small ones. Um, normally there's a lot less gristle on them, so they're nicer in that fact, but they're a lot easier to tear through my experience anyways. So you can see right there, it's starting to already roll on me. So what I do is I just barely get it freed up on this leg. Notice how I wasn't very careful on that big one because I don't have these rolling issues. So I'm going to get it just past that leg and then I'm going to pull it up. That'll flatten all that belly out we'll just scrape this belly on down. Um, that's kind of a, a crucial part there on these small ones. If you have a wide beam, uh, they can get to be kind of difficult. <coughs> difficult, wow, losing my voice here. So I'm just cleaning it up. Dull side, definitely dull side only on the belly. Um, it's pretty thin leather down there really. We'll get it turned over to the other side. if we can get them snugged up here. The small ones are really a pain to get on here. You can see again, this is kind of loose, so. Gotta be careful. Just sharp side it just a little bit. On these, these smaller ones, you're using the sharp side more just to open it up than anything else. Um, there's really not much gristle on most of them. But we'll get it down past that leg, put it on the foot, and we'll scrape her on down. Now they're pretty slick. Um, they really don't take much effort. And I like skunks because they're shorter, so they're kind of always within my short arm range here. But now we'll go down the back. Uh, even on the back, this area will want to ball up on these smaller skunks. So you just kind of got to be careful. Um, through time experience is the number one number one way to figure out flesh on anything really. We're just gonna sharp side it. Push it a little bit. I'm not gonna push this one as far just because right there you can see that first starting to roll up. Um, the smaller ones are the trickier ones. Bigger ones are grislier, smaller ones are trickier. So now I got it pulled up. We can just flush him on down. You can see I probably caught this skunk in the first week of season. Not very prime, but that doesn't matter much really for skunks. Um, not for mine anyways. And these smaller ones, you can normally just peel that fat right down that tail. Um, and kind of right where that fat pocket ends, I just like to cut it off of there. Because um, once you get down here, you can really start popping some tails off. And you really don't want to do that with skunks. Clean up the flank here. This is a really pretty skunk though. Nice white, nice white stripes on it. Clean up this other flank. There we go. He's ready to go on a board. That was actually my last one for the year too. So we'll get you guys set up and I'll show you how to put them on a board. All right, guys. So here we got, um, these are the stretchers I use for my skunks. These are the top lot. Um, regular size coon boards, and they actually fit a skunk perfectly. Um, most of the time they don't get very far down here, um, but I did have one yesterday that reached the 2X line there. That was a really, really big skunk. So we'll grab this little feller here. And I always like to slide them on the board on the ground. Hopefully you guys can see a little bit of that. 
Grab them by the tail, squeeze them down, put the nose over, give it a good pop, snug it up there. Yeah, this is a little dude, holy cow. So what I do is I like to do, obviously one at the base of the tail here, um, then I do two more, one to hold it around the sides, and then one each in the flank, and then I'll do six down the tail. So now what you do here is you just find where the tail, tail kind of starts, pull that in just a little bit. There we go, that's, that's how it starts right there. Um, then I flip it over to the flanks here. We're gonna just pull that down a little bit. Um, and for what mine are going for, I don't really cut a window or anything. Um, I just kind of leave them, man, really not holding on there. I don't really cut a window or anything, I just kind of leave it. Um, as long as it's gonna dry properly, that's the main thing. But I got my tail already split all the way down, so I'm gonna put one in the middle on the base of the tail. And I'll give you guys a look at this when I'm done with it too. One on the edge, take another pin, go around the side, and that way it gives us a nice straight, straight line across there. I don't know why, maybe it's the coon trapper in me, but I just have to have a straight skirt or it, I lose my mind. So, something about that, it's just, it's gotta be as straight as possible for me. Um, no matter what I'm putting up, really. Get this other side pulled down. Get this pin in the side here. And what I'm doing to put that in the side is I'm sticking it and pulling it down and around. That way it holds it snug on the edge there. And we're gonna put one, a couple inches down on the base of the tail there. We got a row. Then we're gonna do another row of two, just to keep that tail open. Ooh, that's all that really matters. Uh, it's keeping this baby open. There's the tip of the tail. Sometimes it can be hard to find in here. Um, they really got a lot of hair on their tails, but there's the end of it there. And I like to take a, where's that? It's just a small chunk of a belly board that I had, and I like to just run that down and get the excess fat off of them. Um, here's kind of what we're what we're looking at here. Hopefully, I can get this to where I can see it. But that is what we're looking for. Just a straight across presentation. Tails opened up. Flanks just like that. Um, I need to actually go get my knife. And all I'm really doing to these skunks, guys, is I'm just taking my knife. Pulling out this bottom lip, taking that bottom lip off. Oh, well, that's really it. Put the belly board in them, like so, so it doesn't stick to the board. And then we'll hang them up here with these other ones. Hopefully, there we go. I'll put up one more for you guys since that one's so small. Um, I'll try and find it. Here's a better one. best thing about skunks they're just the prettiest most unique little creatures to me gorgeous fur and they're almost all different uh, it's pretty wild but again we'll slide this skunk down on this board put the nose over snug it up yeah this is a lot nicer skunk here get that sitting on there straight base of the tail and, and pin. You can see on these bigger skunks, they really got a lot more to them other than them tiny little dudes. All are worth putting up though, that I will say. Put them all up. Um, any skunk that's got good white stripes is definitely worth some pretty good money. Put another one in here. So, I'll try and show you guys a little bit better. My arm's probably getting in the way, but I'm sticking this pin in here, pulling it down and wrapping it around, just like that. And that holds that perfectly flat. So, and a lot of guys worry about this riding up, um, especially on coons, but I find by putting that pin back there, I really don't have that much problems with it. 
Um, if it's that close to the size line, I'm probably not going to get that size out of it anyways once it shrinks. Um, that's coon talk though. Skunks, it doesn't matter all that much. Um, at least not where I'm selling them to. So, just get this tail opened up. Like that. Some of these skunks that I have too, the really good ones, I mean, their tail will be wider than this board. Um, as far as the fur goes, sitting on this board here. Just gorgeous, gorgeous animals. But I do love the, the wood stretchers for these. Great presentation and bush pins. Look at that big beauty. Nice skunk, nice and prime. We're just gonna lop this bottom lip off here quick. I need to sharpen my knife here after this. We're gonna put another belly board in them. I really like these top lot boards. Um, I use them for almost everything other than beaver. Uh, just because I make my own beaver board. Get them hung up there on my hook. There we go, guys. So hopefully you guys are enjoying uh, these fur handling videos. I'm gonna have a lot more coming out here throughout the summer. I got some muskrats, mink. I saved a bunch of stuff in the freezer to show you guys. So. Hopefully you like them. Um, I know I'm not the best at explaining things, but hopefully through at least visually showing you guys, um, someone could take something out of it. So anyways, guys, um, there'll be more videos coming on fur handling stuff. So keep a lookout for that if you're interested and thanks for watching.